Come on in, pull up a chair, and take a load off, because today I'm going to embark on an old-school flashback and take a look at the Advanced Dungeons & Dragons Player's Handbook, and we will party like it's 1978 right after this. Howdy, 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 gang. Welcome once again to the Duct Tape Studios. I'm Jeff McAleer, your host here at the Gaming Gang channel. Our old school for the New Year celebration continues. Now, last Saturday, I shared a look at the 1977 Advanced Dungeons & Dragons Monster Manual. All this week, I have been taking a look at the Dungeons & Dragons Original Adventures Reincarnated lineup from Goodman Games, and I've got plenty more old-school themed content heading your way throughout the rest of January. So today I thought, you know, keep in mind, you can't go much more old-school than Advanced Dungeons & Dragons. I do not personally own od and do not have the white box. I don't have the brown box. I don't have the wooden box. I know. I'm kind of sad. I used to have the white box years and years ago. I had it in about 1980, about when I picked it up, if I remember correctly. Unfortunately, I no longer have it. But I do have the core books for Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, and they are in pretty good shape. So I thought. Come on, let's kick back, let's page through, have a little bit of fun. This is all stream of consciousness. There's no scripting or anything like that. And I thought some people out there may not have ever seen the core books for Advanced Dungeons and Dragons outside of like a PDF. So I thought, hey, you know what? Why not take a look? So we're going to dive on into the player's handbook. This is the sixth printing. This came out in 1980. But the Player's Handbook came out in 78. The Monster Manual came out in 77. And then the Dungeon Master's Guide came out in 79. Which I've always thought was pretty bizarre that, you know, people got the Monster Manual before the Player's Handbook or the Dungeon Master's Guide. So it was kind of like, hey, here are all these monsters, and you're going to be using them with Dungeons and Dragons, but we have new rules that you don't have yet. But here's the monsters. <laughs> like, okie doke. These days, when a role playing game releases a player's handbook, normally, 99% of the time, that book contains. All of the game rules. That obviously is not the case when we look at Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. We'll we'll dive in in just a sec. I will also talk a little bit about uh, if you are looking to collect these original A D and D core books, what to look for and what prices you can probably expect to be paying on the secondary market as far as uh, auctions and things like that. So let's look at the back of the book here. Thankfully, my copy is in pretty good shape. No more searching through stacks of books and magazines to find out what you need to know. Really? And what books would those have been? The OD&D books? I don't seem to recall there being a lot of magazines out there. Maybe Dragon, but Dragon was still not really a magazine yet. The Player's Handbook puts it all at your fingertips including all recommended character classes, fighters, paladins, rangers, magic users, etc. Character races, dwarves, elves, gnomes, half-orcs, humans, etc. I gotta be honest, I didn't, I didn't recall gnomes being in the player's handbook. It's been a long time since I actually flipped through this. We've got character level statistics, equipment lists with cost, Spell listings by level and descriptions of effects, including many new spells. 
As a dungeon adventurer or a dungeon master, you will find the contents of this book to be what you've been waiting for. All useful material is now compiled under one cover, especially for players. Let's jump on in. So thankfully, my copy, and this is not the copy I had when I was a kid. I wish it was, but it's not. Uh, I picked this up on the secondary market, and I want to say I paid 65 for it. But there's no writing inside it. The, uh, the pages are still pretty white. Although, I got to rem- I got to point out, I don't recall the pages being sparkling white in the first place. Now, I might be wrong. And I mean, you know, I am accessing. I am accessing. I am accessing memory banks a long time ago. But uh, I seem to recall that there was a bit of like an off, a bit of an off white to the pages. So this uh, clocks in at like 126 pages, I want to say, which is pretty interesting to, to think of how much info is packed into the 126 pages. One of the first things that you notice is, man, is that font small. And that's the case with all the AD&D stuff. We have this like really small font. And of course, we get to enjoy some high Gygaxian language as well. Although I have to admit, I never had an un- of any problem understanding. It's just a little more verbose than, than we're used to seeing these days. So we've got our different tables. We've got our strength, our intelligence. Uh, the artwork throughout here is a real mixed bag. I mean, there is some fantastic artwork. And then there's the, like, you know, comic strip stuff. I never understood the inclusion of this. But once again, the artwork is a huge step up from what you would have found in original Dungeons and Dragons, the white box and so forth. You really don't get much more old school than AD&D. All right, so we've got uh, character class limitations based on race, which I know no one goes by this anymore. In fact, even back in the day, I know a lot of game masters, a lot of dungeon masters, they ignored it. They didn't, oh, well, you're an elf. You can only go up to this level. Strangely enough, I don't know what the deal was, but a lot of races had unlimited potential as thieves. Strangely enough, I don't know why. It's like, okay, if you're an elf, you can be what you, you can you can go as high as you want as a thief. As a magic user, I think it was like ten. I think it was level ten is where it cut off. Of course, at this point in time, we did have twenty levels that the player characters could attain. Like I said, I just didn't remember gnomes being in the the core book. The, uh, the player's handbook back in the day. They're not in the artwork here. So we get discussion of the different character classes. So, of course, the big deal with Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, of course, was race and class were separate. So if you are a halfling, you could take on an adventuring class. Your class was not, you're a halfling. Same with dwarves, same with elves. Uh, we did have the introduction of the half-orc and, of course, the gnome and half-elf as player character races. So we've got all the various different character classes. Then we get into discussion about equipment. All of our different weapon types, their weight and their damage versus opponent. Some people forget that the weapons had different damage depending on the size of the opponent. That's something a lot of people have forgotten about Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. 
something else I always thought was kind of funny is the sheer love that Gary Gygax had for pole arms. Yeah, for all these different pole arms. Yep. And the thing is, nobody knew what they looked like. It's like, what the hell's that? I have no idea what that looks like. It's like morning stars and maces. A lot of people had absolutely no idea what a, a and a flail. I remember when I was a kid and we were playing, we knew what a mace was, but we weren't too sure what a flail or a morning star happened to be. And flails and morning stars are actually relatively similar. So we get into all the different spells. And as you can see with Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, the spell descriptions are very concise. We're not looking at page after page of information about each spell. So one of the things I like about the old school is that things tend to be presented just right up front, very uh, to the point. There isn't a whole lot of uh, extra fluff and background. Now, sometimes with some of the older adventures, that's kind of a detriment because it's just kind of, okay, well, here you go. Just dropping to right into this. And there isn't a whole lot of backstory for you to build your adventure hooks on. That's why so many adventures would start off. You're in a tavern. You're part of a caravan, your caravan guards. So we've got the different classes. So here we've got the druid spells we've got the magic user spells one thing i always thought was odd about the vast majority of old school role playing games that are based upon D and a D and d is spell levels because you would think the spell level should coincide with the level of the character which of course it did not. So as a second level caster, you don't know second level spells. And that always confused people. Confuses a lot of people. All right, just kind of zipping on through here. As you can see, the player's handbook is not overloaded with artwork. Same is the case with the Dungeon Master's Guide as well. I do like uh, some of the line artwork is really nicely done. The Minotaur there, I think, is is pretty cool. There is an image of a magic mouth that is very iconic that I, I really dig as well. So here we've got the Illusionist spells. Talk about spell casting, movement, infravision, ultravision, which, of course, those changed. And we got uh, dark vision. Invisible movement, traps, tricks, and encounters, combat procedures, morale. There we go. There's our magic mouth, which I think is pretty cool. Always like that. And then we get into our appendices. So psionics, which I got to be honest, I don't think anybody I know or knew ever used psionics. Uh, I know a lot of people always felt they were the the rules were just broken. I don't know. It's to me, it's like all right, you already have magic spells. Why would you need psionics? We get an alignment graph. Talking about the different planes, and we get some reference sheets. So I always kind of laugh where it's like, okay, so we went from that really cool image of the magic mouth back here where was it right there so that oh yeah that that art works pretty nice and then we'd get stuff like this real hodgepodge uh but for the most part i mean you know the artwork served its purpose so we've got our our reference sheets which i think these were originally perforated no they're not perforated in this book 
But uh, yeah, actually, it even says these pages are perforated for easy removal if desired. And I don't feel a perforation there. Because thankfully, because if there was, this page would probably be gone. All right. So that is the player's handbook for Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. So if you are looking to pick up the AD&D core books, they are available in PDF. They are available at DMs Guild, which is part of the One Bookshelf site, which uh, the Gaming Gang is an affiliate of. They go for $9.99, which is kind of funny because I originally bought my player's handbook for $10. My monster manual was $10. And I'm almost positive the Dungeon Master's Guide was $15. So, funny enough, in PDF, you can get the player's handbook and monster manual for the same price as you would have gotten the physical books back in the late 70s. If you're looking to pick up the physical books, this runs about, in, in this kind of shape, this runs about $90 or so on eBay. That's what I've seen uh, a lot of auctions close out at, around $85 to $100 for a player's handbook in pretty good shape. There are a few things that you want to keep an eye out for. Uh, number one, and it's it's impossible to inv to avoid completely. You are going to see a little bit of wear in the corners. This isn't so bad. It's just a little bit of wear. Sometimes you'll actually see it's almost like uh, the fabric of the cover is starting to split apart a little bit. It's almost like there's fuzz on it. Something else. Keep in mind, look out for the spine. You'll see a lot of copies that are out there for sale. The spine is all kind of like bubbled, or it's actually pulling away from the contents of the book. And then as you can see, my back cover is pretty nice too. Just, But like I said, it's impossible to get around a little bit of wear and tear on the books. Some books will have a, a writing inside. I've seen monster manuals that were actually colored in with markers and pencils and things like that. So I was very happy to get this for, like I said, I think I got it for about 60. I've had it for a while, but um, you can pick these up, you know, I mean, if you want to pick them up and they're a little wear and tear, a little more wear and tear, you can, I've, I've seen them go for as little as $30. Uh, and they're not like all torn apart and stuff like that. All right. So that is the player's handbook for advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Next Saturday, I will dive in and take a look at the advanced Dungeons and Dragons Dungeon Master's Guide. So by all means, be sure to swing on by and take a peek at that. All right. That is it for this time out. If you like this video, by all means, please give it a quick thumbs up. Subscribe to the Gaming Gangs channel if you haven't already. And if you do subscribe, ding that bell. will not only let you know when I upload videos such as this old school flashback. It'll also inform you when my live stream, the Gaming Gang Dispatch, airs Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday evenings right here on YouTube at 7 p.m. Central. So stay tuned. We have got plenty of old school themed role playing excitement and coverage during our old school for the new year celebration all throughout January. Once again, I'm Jeff McAleer. Thank you very much for taking time out to watch this video. And until I see you next time, here's hoping each and every one of you gets to enjoy plenty of great gaming with your gang. Oh, hey, you're still here. Well, if that's the case, by all means, subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel by clicking right here. Check out the latest episode of the Gaming Gang Dispatch 
explore, find out what YouTube recommends you check out from the channel. And of course, once again, I'm Jeff McAleer. Thanks for watching.